So this is part B of our look at micro bit coding with LEDs. Now in the first part we looked at doing some of the basic stuff so having a single LED light up looking at an LED string. Um, what I did realize as well I didn't mention in that is that we often use these strips like this instead of just the strings and these can be cut off uh, you can make them as long as you like and they've got a sticky back for putting onto things. They do have some tiny little contacts here. Um, so generally what we do for the students is to solder some pieces on there. Um, but uh, yeah, these are also useful if we want to do that. So um, next part of this, what we're going to look at now is programmable LEDs. So these are LEDs that we can light up. Uh, and then change the colors on them, change the patterns of how they move around uh, with those lights. Now these come in a few different varieties. So I've got three examples here just to show you. So this one looks a little like the strip here of LEDs, but these are uh, programmable LEDs. Now this one has on the end of it a connector which goes uh, it could be used with a number of things, but these ones specifically go with the um, little mini breakout boards we have on the back of some of these micro bits that we have with this um, sensor pack. But you may have a different kind of breakout board that you use. I really wouldn't recommend starting to do some of these programmable LEDs and try and like crocodile clip loads of wires on the bottom to do this. It just starts to get a little bit of a mess. So these very inexpensive breakout boards are great for being able to do this. So this one we use commonly and um, with that one simply in, then you've just got three pins there. You plug on two, four, pin zero, pin one, pin two. You can see those all labeled on there. So we can do it with those ones. This is the same, but a little more basic. So, oops, get it right around. So that one can go on there. That's now on pin zero and we can start to code that one but we will look at that one uh, in a minute this one is basically the same but a lot more condensed so it's on a hard uh, circuit board here we've got eight on here there's ten on the other one um, but this one again you might want to use for something where you want the LEDs a little more packed together we've got a ring here um, it's actually the same so covered in glue from the last kids project um, but um, it works in exactly the same way as the strip, so I don't think it's going to be any different just because it's a, a ring here. Imagine it was a straight line of these that's just been bent round into a circle, um, and it works just the same. So the one that we're going to look at, though, um, for now, we're going to use this one just for ease of, uh, of coding this so that you can see how this works. So what we need to do, I'm going to start a new project in here and I'm going to call these now these kind of LEDs they're called neo pixels so start a new program called neo pixel now um, what we need to do with this one before we start doing anything else is that we need to add the extension for neo pixels because it's not built in here straight away so it's not one of the ones that comes up so we go there, we go to the top, and we type in. It's actually there at the top. It's one of the common ones just here, but you can search for it. Now, once we've clicked that, we have a new section on here called NeoPixel. And some of these look quite uh, advanced or intimidating, depending on, uh, on your experience with using some of these before. But we're going to go through the basics of how we can light this up and how we can get it to change colors. So a few things we need to do. Uh, some things we need to do on the start so when it powers on it needs to know some things about our um, leds so i'm going to use this one first and what this does it's going to create a variable called strip and this strip is a set of neopixels connected at pin zero yes correct with 24 leds no it's 10 here so i've got a string of 10 leds RGB format, yes, so red, green, blue uh, format that we can change the colors, uh, connected to pin zero. Okay, so that's the setup for the first bit, telling it what it is. Um, then I'm going to set uh, something on it. So what I'm going to do, so set, uh, then the strip itself, so we, we created this variable called strip, 
and we said it was connected there, it's got 10 LEDs. Now I'm gonna tell Strip to change all the colors to rainbow colors from one to 360. So that's a range of hues of color. So I'm gonna go from one to 360, so it basically chooses a range of them. And actually what we can see over here in the um, simulator is that it has actually shown us this. So we've got 10 LEDs just here with a rainbow coloring along them. Okay, so actually I could connect my micro bit up at this point, which I will do just here. Just gonna pair this one. Connect it. Okay, and now I'm gonna download that code. Just copying over now, you can see it flashing on the back. Okay, so we can see now exactly the same as our simulator, we have a rainbow set of colors across our LEDs. Now, um, back into the code again here, what I want to do with this is that that's okay, so it does that, but I want it forever to be changing these um, colors a little bit. So I'm gonna ask them to rotate by one. Now, if we look on the simulator, that's not gonna do anything. So yeah, fine, forever it's rotating by one. But actually what we have to do is tell it to then show the new uh, value of strips so the new color. So if we put this on here, Okay, now we can see that it's running through um, just like that and rotating the, the pixels as it goes along. So let's, now we're paired already, let's download that to the micro bit just here. There we go. So now I've got that running along like this. Now it might be that you don't want just crazy lighting like this. Um, you might just want it to be a particular color um, or something like that. So instead of um, doing all of this, I'll keep my forever for something else. But what I'm going to do this time on my NeoPixels is I'm just going to start off show color red. And you've got a variety of colors you can choose here. They're not the only colors you can make it. You can mix your own. Um, but that look is now just red on the screen there. If I download that program to here, so that's copying over now. There we go, so we've got just a string of red. Um, and what we could do is we could have that actually run through a sequence of colors for us. So we could um, drop in a pause of, let's say, a second, and then just duplicate that, have it go to orange, Let's just tell you what, let's duplicate the whole thing, and then I can just go to there. Actually, let's not go orange, let's go purple, and then let's go green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one out of there and drop it in here now. So what we've got, let's just talk through this. So... Um, on the start, it's just telling it it's got a set of NeoPixels. Then it's going to set the strip color red, then wait a second purple, then wait a second green, then wait a second, then back around again to red. And we can see that in the simulator here that it's doing that. So let's download that code to the paired micro bit. Okay, so now we're running through a sequence like this. Okay, so what we've got now, we've set this to um, something slightly different. So we've got our first bit, which is exactly the same. And then we've set the uh, pixel at zero to red. So that's the first one, zero, um, and that's now red. And then we're showing that. Now what we could do is to then use this rotate pixels again, and then show. And what we can have then is there we go. So it's now just going to run the red one along here. Now that might be too fast. So if that's too quick, then we could just drop a little pause into here. 
There we go. And that can run along. And interestingly, with these strips, actually, you can connect one into the next and extend your strip out. So you can actually then have a sequence of 20 or 30 or 40, um, as long as you want it to be. Just be aware that the power draw becomes a little more difficult then. So once you get... We've, we've done 20, no problem, just on, on the normal power, but that's where we'd start then to step up something like this, which has the ability to have slightly more power, um, or some of the breakout boards we've got that have got a built-in lithium battery uh, built into the breakout board that give you more power to power more of these. Um, but let's download this code. Okay, so now we've got ours running along here. Okay, and the code's very straightforward for this. So, um, these are some of the basics of using the programmable NeoPixel LEDs. There's loads more that you can do with these um, and do some really interesting things, um, particularly the bar graph function actually within the NeoPixels is really interesting. Um, because you can use that then to show um, it respond to some data. So you could actually have it um, respond to a sound sensor. So when you clap your hands, it would move up and down um, a little more than that. Or you could have it show, I don't know, over time you could build a clock. It builds up and up and up as, as the time goes on and then comes back round. But you can use these in lots of really interesting ways by combining them with sensors and with other equipment. But common one for us has been the students using them quite a lot on body systems models um, so that they can show things like nerve impulses or sh showing circulation and things like that. Um, but yeah, so as I say, that's, that's really the basics of, of getting to grips with these and really just playing with them uh, is the best way to, to see what's going to work and what's not going to work.